panel discussion, um, uh, Nick Harvey from Southampton, um, who again has led a group um, that have put together the, the uh, protocol for the DEXA imaging, will talk about uh, that protocol and its value. Nick. Great. Thank you very much. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here today to uh, tell you about the DXA assessment of bone joint and body composition. And I thought that uh, before going into the details of the protocol, I'd just set this in the context of the disease burden and the sorts of things that this modality can tell us about. And chronic musculoskeletal disease worldwide has been recently demonstrated through the Global Burden of Disease Project, to which we as a, an MRC unit in Southampton have contributed. Um, and this, this burden is, or the disability associate, associated with musculoskeletal disease worldwide is equivalent to around 3% of GNP and increasing at a greater rate than that associated with many other chronic non-communicable diseases. Osteoporosis, so that uh, the increased fragility of bones associated with decreased uh, mass and microarchitecture that becomes more common with age, uh, is a key component of that. And just to give you an example of the, the burden, uh, for a woman at 50 years, um, there's a one in two chance of a fracture in her remaining lifetime. And the figure for a man at 50 years is around one in five. And this adds up through the associated morbidity and, in, and indeed for major fractures increased mortality to around four billion pounds per year in the UK and around 39 billion euros in Europe annually. And osteoarthritis, similarly, that uh, decrease in joint space, uh, increase in, uh, in, in other uh, factors such as osteophytes and pain uh, associated with many joints. This, this is a disease which, again, has a major impact on disability long term and is extremely common. So in the over 65s, there may be up to 50% of some sort of manifestation. And the major economic impact of this comes from arthroplasty, so mainly uh, replace, joint replacements at the hip and knee. And you can see here that this outcome which will be captured in, in UK by a bank through linkage to HES, um, is increasing uh, and projected to increase over the next 20 years. So what can uh, DXA tell us about these uh, outcomes and also uh, through the, the body composition uh, about other uh, potential outcomes? I'll just say a little bit about the technology itself as it may not be quite so familiar to many of you as the MRI uh, modality is. So DXA is dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, and this uses a low dose of X-rays at two different energies, either achieved through uh, voltage switching or through uh, filtration. And this, uh, here's a typical scanner, um, and the patient lies on the couch. We have an X-ray source underneath and a multiple detector array. And these two energies allow the instrument to calculate bone density on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis, but also to uh, measure body composition, uh, so a fat and a measure of lean. And the sites that are typically uh, assessed are the hip, lumbar spine, whole body, and lateral spine. And the, uh, as well as the BMD, this gives us images as well, which I'll come on to. So in terms of DXA as a, as a, for its clinical value and its value in research as a predictor of a future fracture, this is well established through many, many cohorts. So fracture risk doubles for every standard deviation decrease in BMD. And then the WHO uh, in the mid-90s uh, developed this uh, operational classification of osteoporosis as uh, an individual having a T-score, which is the standard deviation uh, in bone mineral density uh, at 2.5 uh, or lower uh, compared with a normal healthy adult. And the femoral neck is the reference site for BMD. But we're moving away from simply categorizing above or below minus 2.5 to incorporating BMD as one of many risk factors, or one of about eight, eight risk factors uh, in uh, the FRAX uh, uh, fracture risk assessment tool, which allows a calculation of uh, a 10 year probability of fracture. So the DXA modality gives us a numerical value of bone mineral density, and it gives us other bone-related measures, which I'll summarize in a minute. But it also gives us uh, some very beautiful images, uh, which are really equivalent to uh, 2D to, uh, radiographs. And so the lateral vertebral uh, assessment, uh, this is a equivalent to a lateral uh, radiograph of the whole spine at much lower radiation. So here we're, we're talking microsieverts, so much lower 
uh, radiation than, than a, a, a normal plane radiograph would accrue. And we can see the quality um, of the vertebral fracture assessment is uh, really very good. And these sorts of studies, um, either through, uh, through radiological interpretation or through semi-automated analyses, uh, can tell us uh, about vertebral fractures. There's also the potential to use the high-resolution images that uh, are produced by the um, lunar IDEXA instrument uh, to look at uh, osteoarthritis. And here you can see that the images are really of very high quality. Uh, so here uh, are images from the IDEXA, here a uh, plain radiograph. And you can see that these images are certainly of high enough quality to look for the radiographic features of osteoarthritis, uh, and as shown here, the, the standard Kelgren and Lawrence scoring. The other aspect to the DXA is that if you scan the whole body, then you can get a measure of body composition. And this is a three-compartment model, so we get uh, the total bone mineral content, uh, we get a measure of fat, uh, and we also get a measure of lean, which uh, in the appendicular site, so on arms and legs, uh, is mainly muscle, but in the abdomen also encompasses the viscera. And in modern DXA scanners, such as the, the lunar IDEXA used in UK Biobank, there are rather more sophisticated ways of, uh, of processing these data. And this gives us uh, a ready measure of estimated android-gynoid ratio uh, and also an estimate of visceral adipose tissue. So the, the good things about DXA body composition are that it's quick. So the, the body composition scan, whole body scan, takes around uh, five to ten minutes, depending upon the mode. It gives us this three-compartment measure of bone, fat, and lean. It also allows a, reg a regional analysis, so you can separate out the arms and the legs, so you can get your measure of appendicular lean mass, which, of course, is important in the assessment of sarcopenia. It's automated, and I think one of the major advantages of the DXA uh, assessment is actually that the instrument, once it's set up and the patient is positioned correctly, will give you an output with very little post-processing. So for the whole body scan, nothing needs to be done, apart from checking, as the radiographers do, that there's no artefacts or, or uh, bits missing from the image. For the, uh, for the lumbar spine and hip, the radiographers analyse at the time uh, and uh, place the markers appropriately. And that's been shown in our validation studies to be a highly reliable procedure. And so this outputs numerical data uh, basically from the scan with no further post-processing. The disadvantage of DXA, of course, this is a two-dimensional technique. So unlike the MRI, uh, this cannot give you true three-dimensional volumes. And there's limited spatial resolution. So just to come on to the DXA protocol itself, uh, this encompasses uh, all of these various aspects to tell us about body composition, bone, and joint. And we can see that we have the whole body scan. We have a BMD, a bone mineral density scan of both hips and the image, an image of both knees, uh, an image and bone density of the lumbar spine, and then the lateral uh, thoracolumbar lumbar spine for vertebral fracture assessment. And for those of you who are interested to find out more, there are some uh, videos on the website, uh, if you so desire, to find out more about the, the imaging. So just to quickly summarise in closing the, the data that are available, um, so at the whole body, lumbar spine and hip sites, we have the bone-related indices, so bone area, content, mineral content, and mineral density. From the whole body, fat and lean mass in addition to bone mass, uh, this android gynoid ratio and visceral adipose tissue. And then, uh, taking beyond the numerical data, we have DICOM images, high-resolution DICOM images, which allow a huge opportunity for image processing and uh, secondary analysis at the whole body, both hips, knees, and the, the AP and the lateral spine, to look at things like hip structure analysis, uh, shape analysis, uh, and vertebral fractures. And this just gives you an example of the uh, images. So to conclude, um, DXA gives us the, the recognized gold standard for bone mineral density assessment. Body composition is reliable and uh, compares well with that derived from other modalities. We get high-resolution images uh, and immediately available numerical data, and those are, uh, are there on the um, showcase. And it really complements the MRI 
uh, abdomen scan uh, with its uh, higher spatial resolution and volumetric measures. And then finally, there's options for post-processing of the images to gain uh, another layer of information. So with that, um, I will conclude, and I'll just finish by uh, thanking uh, very much the participants who've made all this possible, uh, the funders, uh, Rory Collins and Paul Matthews, for uh, leading this and with the other members of the working group. And then I think, finally, Steve Garrett and his team at the at, at UK Biobank done an absolutely fantastic job to get all of this sort of industrial-level um, science going. So thank you. <laughs>